All right, so I want to create a syslog message, the three or below. I, um, I just went ahead and did a no shut on this serial zero. I'll shut it. There's no IP address on there, but this generated a level three syslog message, and I should see this guy in my Kiwi, and I do. Okay, so we had generated quite a few. If we do a show log, we had a bunch of fives here and a six even, but then these threes are the only ones that showed up because we do have the syslog level at four and below and we can verify this with the show log uh, you can just begin at trap but here we go we got a trap logging uh, level is set to warnings which is level four and we are shooting these out to this syslog server and this is interesting uh, different iOS versions have different stuff in here so you can see we are using UDP port 514 and audit is disabled link up okay so we've done um, our configuration of the trap level. We've also used the uh, source interface by pointing it to the loopback. Let's go ahead and take a look at I think the last of the options that we had. Well, oh, actually, we could do facilities. We'll do that. We'll do them both here. So let's go ahead and do logging and then facilities. Facility rather singular. And you can see there's a grip of things that you can set here. You can set auth, cron, daemon, kernel. The ones that we really should only be using are the locals and by default we're using local 7 we can see that on our Kiwi server here that the priority is local 7 and error is this uh, level 3 syslog message so let's first of all go ahead and set our level to 7 really oh trap jeez <laughs> learn from me <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that we could get all the syslog messages sent so now let's go ahead and do Logging, not logging. Jeez, if I could type, I'd be dangerous. And we'll just we'll change it to let's let's make this a demon. And let's go ahead and do clear counters. That should generate a level five. Go see this now on syslog server, and we do. And you can see that the priority has changed from local seven to demon. Like I said in the slide section, you're going to want to probably keep this at local 7 maybe touch base with your sysadmin for the syslog server and see what he wants on his side no real good reason to change this unless they want it changed so now let's go ahead and go to the last of the options that we discussed and we'll go to logging origin ID we can set this to our host name IP address uh, or a string let's go ahead and just set it for host name and then we will go ahead and clear the counters once again generate a syslog message which we should see here and we did the host name is still going to stay the same here because on this uh, server it's referring to the IP address as the host name but you can see in the message itself it was stamped with R1 and what's interesting about this is you did not see this that R1 stamp on the console log and if I do a do show log this is our logging buffer. Here's our message, and you can see here it's got the timestamp and everything, but it does not have R1 on there. So like I said in the slides, this is only going to be on the messages that are actually sent to the remote syslog server. So, all right, for completeness sake, let's go ahead and change this to IP, and then do the same thing. And we'll wait to check this out, but here's the fun part. Here's a string, and it says text string. Let's go ahead and put packet and we cleared the counters so I'm just generating a, a syslog message every time I change the origin ID and let's go ahead and do string now if there's a space in there let's say packet lab rules it's gonna give you an error message and you're probably not gonna get enough information from here to figure out why it gave you an error message basically if you're using any spaces in your string you have to enclose the whole string within quotation marks and now let's go ahead and do clear counters let's pop back to our syslog server and here we can see here was when we used um, the host name here's when we used the IP address and note that the IP address it's using the loopback interface rather than the fast zero zero interface IP address so there is some correlation between that source interface command and what it will use when you specify IP uh, here's packet lab I noticed there was no spaces in there so that one took it and here we go here's our packet lab rules with spaces so that's really gonna wrap it up we uh, showed how to configure a Cisco router for a remote syslab server 
uh, we went through the major options that you're probably going to run into when you're configuring a Cisco router to use a remote syslog server. There are a number of other options. I'll go over those in a uh, quote unquote advanced syslog server lesson later. But those are the biggies. Uh, and it's good even if you never have to configure these just to know what they are. So somebody asks you what's your syslog facility set to, you'll know what they're talking about. I suppose there's one more thing I want to show you. I'm going to pause real quick and I'm going to fire up Wireshark, which is a packet capture program. So just bear with me one second here. Okay, I did want to show you that by default, syslog is not secure. Um, I've got a packet capture and I'm just filtering on packets that are using syslog. So let's go ahead and I think I can get this all on the same screen. If I can't, not a biggie. All I really need to do is do clear counters. Just want to generate a uh, syslog message. Okay, we see the syslog message was generated on the router. We see it appeared on the syslog server. More importantly, we see that it appeared in Wireshark, my packet capture. So I'm going to actually stop this. Single packet should be good enough here. Uh, you can see it's IP, it's coming from 1.1.1, which is our loopback interface, and it's going to the destination IP address of the syslog server using UDP. Uh, and if you remember from the slides, the destination port is going to be 514. The source port is going to be an arbitrary high port number. Here's the interesting part we can actually see the message. So I was able to capture this packet. There's no security with this. This is not encrypted. Um, you can do stuff with TCP and add some SSL, I believe, to this to make these things encrypted. But it's going to be going across the wire in clear text by default. And you might be like, oh, well, who the hell cares? He doesn't. This doesn't give up much information. Some, somebody cleared the counters. Well, what it will give up is if, uh, let's do that real quick. I'm going to pause real quick. OK, what I did was I just. I logged out and then I logged in and this time I'm going to be logged in as Packet Lab or I didn't have a user account that I was logged in I was just on the console line so I don't even have to go into configuration mode I can just clear the counter from here and you'll see a difference when we get our syslog message it's going to say by Packet Lab on the console oh and of course I stopped the capture let me go ahead <laughs> and pause all right now I'm running the packet capture so let's get all our Windows here, let's go ahead and just up arrow. Do the same thing, generates the message. We see the message here, and we see it on the packet capture. Now I will stop. What I wanted to show you was this message here shows that the cleared counters on all interfaces by Packet Lab. So what it's showing me here is that there's a username called Packet Lab that's active on this router. And unfortunately, in my case, I made the password for packet lab the same as a username so it's packet lab packet lab so it's not giving you a ton of information that you know just opens the doors to all your uh, routers and devices but it gives you a little bit so this hacker will be you know he's halfway there he's got the uh, username now he just has to get the password which again like in this case I was being a, a dumb user and he can go ahead and try packet lab packet lab and be able to get in of course this is the console password but whatever it's a start all right so that's going to do it that showed you how to set up a cisco router to use a uh, remote syslog server for syslog messages also went through four of probably the major options that you will run into thanks once again for joining me in the packet lab and i hope this lesson helps you along in your route to networking greatness and i hope to see you again soon thank you bye